Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of my weekly and I am just going to talk about the asteroids for a little bit, just some of the things that have been coming up uh, that I've been noticing, observing with my pet asteroids. I have a few favorites, so I am going to share those with you and i'm just deciding whether i'm going to share my screen or not let me say i guess i will um just want to kind of explain a few things i guess uh okay from regarding last week's part two episode where I was talking about some asteroids and actually the last two weeks I've been talking about the Didymus mission the DART mission to um, crash a spacecraft to crash a spacecraft into the moon of Didymus which is named Dimorphos so I was looking at the backstory of the names and the meanings and just kind of speculating um over my past episodes um just to just wondering like what effect that would have on our own collective consciousness here on earth how it would affect us so I was looking at twins and that concept of two duality existing in two states or forms um, and anything that would fit into that idea. And then I came up with, I stumbled across um, the case of the twins who had DID, disassociative identity disorder, which was one of the things that I talked about when I was musing about what this event or supposed event, how it would affect us in consciousness. And, you know, I talked a little bit about the psyche, you know, and our conscious and our unconscious. And then to the extreme dysfunction where you would actually have somebody who disassociates and has an a alternate personality. Um, so I just thought, wow, that is really wild. Now that issue has been going on for a while. It's really um, a few years old. No one seems to know what's happened to these twins and their sister with the with the Aura Corporation VR technology that is supposedly helping to um, treat people with mental health issues. Very, very strange. And um, so there was that. And then this week I did um, get a few hits on twins. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that alarm going off. That's weird. And uh, oh, uh, Thomas Sheridan, if you follow him, or if you don't, go check him out on Beyond Room 313, was relating a dream that he had about two moons. So uh, I'm just observing this two twin duality kind of theme as it has come up since the Dimorphos, Didymus and Dimorphos DART mission, um, just kind of keeping track of what's been going on, um, what I see coming up, like within the collective, so to speak, observations. So there was that and um, what else? I'm just looking at my notes. Oh, Amicus. It's interesting. Um, 
I read an article about the onion, the online publication, the onion, it's satire. It's a joke, but sometimes people read it and they think it's actually true. Uh, when in fact it's really meant to be funny but ironic and um there was an article about an amicus brief and i know that that's a legal term but when i heard it i was like oh oh amicus amicus that's an asteroid let me go look up and see what i can dig up on that and um i know from research previous research into asteroids i've been looking at this one because it's been conjunct to pluto for so long it's at 26 degrees and pluto's at 27 degrees of capricorn um and because pluto just went direct this past week this would actually this influence will be actually very strong especially since the um we have the sun conjunct to uh to venus and then it's going to square pluto um and the way i was looking at this asteroid before was um this idea of personal power tactics that one might use um to gain power and um innocent victims of a power structure, let's say, um, also the way, ways to treat other people and like the consequences for not treating people the way they should be treated. So it's basically the misuse of power, which is right up Pluto's alley, <laughs> you know, uh, we've seen a lot of misuse of power that's been exposed to us while Pluto has been transiting through Capricorn and it's wrapping up where it is in Capricorn going through the last degrees of it and having a look at it you know from a national perspective the abuse of our own power as a nation politically in the world you know just because we have the clout, you know, we throw our weight around. So looking at that, um, but then I wanted to look at what, what exactly was an amicus brief, because I wasn't sure what what that um, actually entailed in, you know, legal jargon. So what it actually means is um, friend of the court. So you think ami, amicus, amicable, amiable, friendly, right? So an amicus brief is something that is filed usually in a civil suit. Again, I'm not, I don't know all of the like the legal uh, issues that go on with this, but this is my understanding what an amicus brief is. It's basically like you're not party to the lawsuit, but because something might be within your um, specialty, something that you specialize in and can advise the court because of your uh, knowledge on the matter, you file an amicus brief to point out, basically, it's pointing out legal issues that are in doubt, can be in doubt, and clarifying them, something that the court might have missed, and you don't have to be a party to the lawsuit. So in essence, it really talks about um, expo exposing a flaw or a mistake um, or um, anomalies within a system, a situation, a relationship, maybe. Um, finding a flaw and saying, hey, you might want to look at this, right? If, like your goal is to see justice done which you would think that the judge 
is there to see justice done, right? Then they might want to consider this. So I thought that was very interesting in that um, where our focus as a nation should be on looking at the flaws in our system. And so, I mean, how do you, how do you change anything unless you know that something is a problem? So what is going to come up? Obviously, the flaws in the system are being so exposed and shown for what they are. It has to be shown to us so that we can, on a conscious level, register our opinion, our viewpoint, our um, uh, register, like just consciously saying, no, that's not right. I mean, it can involve speaking up. It can involve um, pursuing justice. But I also know that this is operating on such a deep level that, you know, I can't go in there and change the system, but I can within myself on a soul level say in my heart, I do not align with that. And I will not agree that that is going to continue because to me that spiritual sovereignty where we look at a situation and we don't give power to the negative aspects of it that on the surface we see people trying to control things or, you know people are trying to steer things in a direction that is not beneficial for the nation humanity whatever um rather than sit there and say oh my god look what they're doing uh because a lot of alternative media will point that stuff out constantly the problems the flaws in the system yes and we need to see those things but um going from a place of powerlessness to a place of power means saying you know maybe on a human physical level i might be subject to um the events that happen here because we are living in a physical reality and it is a a dualistic realm there is light and dark there's good and evil and bad shit happens you know, I cannot just intend my way around it. Um, that would be foolish. That would be spiritually immature. So to register my vote, so to speak, um, I feel that there are um, whatever beings there is god there is holy spirit there is guides and angels and whatever terms people use to indicate non-physical beings that are actually looking out for us and guiding us and protecting us um you know, I feel like we have a whole council of them, each individual of us personally. And I like to think that I can go and have my complaints heard. And, you know, I, I do that quite often for my personal issues. And when I'm looking at karmic things and situations and people, things I'm struggling with and um things i can't do on a anything about on a physical level literally that i have to shift it in a non physical way because that's spiritual warfare so 
I feel like on some level, this amicus Pluto thing is dealing with the idea that the correct use of our power spiritually and mature wise, maturity wise, you know, we're talking about Capricorn. Capricorn is like, you know, the boss, the manager, the father figure, the authority figure, and um, supposedly has that position because they've earned it because they've proven their wisdom, right? Achievement. And they're fit to, to rule, to govern, to manage. So from our own level of Capricorn maturity, you know, we can say, okay, as a friend of the celestial court, I would like to register my opinion that here's the flaw in the system. <laughs> this is what we want. This is what we want the um, spiritual arbiters of justice of whatever, spiritual law, natural law. I like to feel like I can observe and report, you know, if God's looking through my eyes, I want to look at something and say, God, look what's going on over there. It's not good. It's not right. Check it out. Do something about it, please. And trust that all things even out in their way, I guess. All right. So that was amicus. That was pretty cool. I love when those synchronicities happen. Um, I've had a lot of synchronicities when it comes to uh, looking at the asteroids. Uh, one of them I looked at, I stumbled across recently. Like, I, this is not something I've been looking at for a long time. I didn't realize that there was one, an asteroid called Radio Communicata. So when I stumbled across that, I was like, oop. I got to see where that is in my chart. I have to see where it is transiting. And at that time, when I looked at it, transiting commun um, radio communicata was at about one degree of Libra opposite Jupiter. Um, I have it written down somewhere. And I think Mercury was there. It might have been conjunct Mercury. Wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was close to Mercury, or Mercury was about to conjunct it. I think it was at four degrees of Libra, and Mercury had just entered Libra and was opposing Jupiter. And um, I just Googled radio and put in for news to see like what was going on you know and uh a radio announcer had passed very interesting i don't know who he was some broadcaster or radio somebody who was very well, much older um but very influential but that was interesting um and looking at where my natal radio communicata is um, is going to be conjunct the Scorpio eclipse. So, hmm. And, okay, so this is how my synchronicities work. This is wild, I think. This is freaking amazing. And this is what makes me, causes me to know that the spirit is real and these things are real. So as I'm looking at this and I'm, Listening to some music, first of all, the the number of radio communicata is one 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 four four. One forty four is one of my number sinks, and I've been seeing that like for a couple of weeks now, along with eleven eleven, and I always know when there's these big shifts and big changes and there's like the energy is really moving 
when I get a lot of synchronicities and 144, um, a lot, many people think it means different things. I think it's a frequency rather than like an actual number of people, like the 144,000. Um, but it could refer to a group of people. It does reduce to nine and nine life path is more or less spiritual service in this lifetime. So that uh oh yeah and so as i'm researching radio communicata which is one 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 four four i look at the clock and it's 144 as it often is uh and what i'm listening to is radio by lana del rey how fucking crazy is that so you know i would say that um radio communication is a big deal so whether you look at that as like personal telepathy because i do oh god now i have to look at that there's another asteroid that i look at for telepathy but anyway uh yeah radio radio communications i mean who's using radio nowadays other than the military I don't know. Just saying. So interesting things to think about. So um yeah, you can go and look up those asteroids. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I came across that was really interesting. And I don't think so. I'm gonna have to do another video. I just trying to keep this into like two hours worth i tell you what like i freak out every time i have to record something i'm like oh my god i feel like doing it uh. <laughs> and then i get on here and i can't shut up all right so that's it for now amicus radio communicata and radio gaga and whatever else you can think of that associates radio um and didymus and the twins and the good twin bad twin i would like to hear your feedback if you want to leave me a message uh, i do share the anchor link where you can record a message um when you watch the youtube video you can make comments you make i when I post, you know, on social media, I really would like to know what other people are observing. I want this to be a group effort. So step up, check it out, communicate, make a statement. Tell me what you're experiencing. Okay, that wraps it up. I am, as always, Astro Luna Chick. Contact me at astrolunachick at gmail.com. If you're interested in a reading, I have the eclipse special happening, $50. You can have it written, recorded, or uh, we can Zoom or talk on the phone. Anyway, take care, guys, and have a great week. Bye-bye.